Hey, be sure to check out all of our weekly services and our Sunday morning now. You can see it via Facebook Live and or our new YouTube channel. Just search for Place of Grace Church on either platform and join us each Wednesday night for Wednesdays in the Word Adult Bible Study, our United Streamline service, as well as our Grace Kids service on Sundays and our worship service at 10 a.m. on Sunday morning. We hope and pray to see you there. Hey everybody, welcome to Wednesday in the Word. It's good to have everybody here with us tonight. Uh, pray the Lord is blessing you and you are being safe and healthy during this time. Um, different type of format that we usually do, but we are uh, pre-recording just to make it easier to enjoy the, the services and the studies uh, without interruptions. And so uh, something we're, we're just going to probably keep doing until the time that we're able to meet again, which we're praying and hoping is soon. Uh, we are discussing and planning on when the uh, the right time to reopen is, you know, according to the government uh, leaders and, and different things going on. So we are in discussions. The board and I are in discussions as to when we are we do this, uh, we will at least have a plan of a, um, to be able to, to move forward. So continue to pray for us in that and uh, pray for the Lord's blessing of and mercy as he's shown us throughout this whole situation. Um, but I wanted to continue tonight on... I know we didn't have uh, Wednesdays in the Word. We played a replay of the week before. Um, and I wanted to kind of just rem give do a short reminder on what we talked about and maybe finish up that, that portion of uh, part the part two. But we've been talking about God's plan of assurance. And um, a couple of weeks ago, we looked at Psalms 27, 1 through 14. And I think we got through about 10. And so we'll finish up the rest of that tonight. But I wanted to recap and kind of go through uh, what we what we have talked about thus far, just as a reminder, and then finish it off uh, with this, this, this evening and start on the new, new session uh, next week. But with that, let's open in prayer. Lord, I thank you, Father, for each one here tonight. I ask God that you'd be with us. I ask, Lord God, that you would... Be, give us wisdom and guidance and direction as we study your word. Help it, help us to apply your word to our lives. And God, everything that comes out of my mouth, Lord, anoint, Father God, and minister to those who are listening tonight. And we give you honor and praise in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Uh, remember when we started this, this series, uh, we, we were talking about how unusual and, you know, uncertain these days are and we definitely need to remind ourselves of God's you know uh, provision um, of his power and of his love and to that end we're going to continue this this study just for a few more weeks and I pray that it helps us keep our focus um, and our attention on God's splendor and his greatness rather than the chaos and the fear and, and all the uncertainty that's floating around out there even to you know now we've got protests of people wanting to reopen, so it's, it's escalated to a different type of chaos. Um, but by reading and studying God's Word, we can see where God's miraculous accomplishments and where He shows His desire to be involved in every portion of our life. And just where we're able to find God's plan of assurance, His assurance, we can be assured that God has us completely covered and he has us in his hands and taken care of. Uh, remember our theme verse for these studies is Lamentations 3, 22 and 23. Uh, scripture that I, I kind of repeat every morning. And it says, The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. I love that because when I lift my head up off the ground, doesn't matter how I feel, doesn't matter what the day, the weather's like, doesn't matter what kind of news is breaking, God's mercy has begun afresh in the mornings. As soon as the birds are chirping, as soon as the sun begins to, to crest over the horizon, we can be assured by this scripture that God's mercy is afresh for that day. Many times we talked about God's word you know, coming to us at a point um, of our need. 
and you may know a particular truth or a verse that you've read a million times over, and one time you're just reading the scriptures and you're going through a difficult moment and it pops you in the head like it's never done before. Um, and it reminds us of how blessed we are to be saved. Those moments where God says, it's okay, child, I've got you. Be assured, all is well. And um, when we started talking a couple weeks ago, it was before Easter, and our focus, our study was on that of salvation. And we were using David's uh, Psalm 27 to look at salvation and the assurance of, of that we have in God's salvation. And so quickly to recap, if we look at verse number 1, it says the, he says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Um, David saw that God was the light of the path that led to salvation. God was it. That's the only way that we can be saved. It's the only way we can be made whole is through salvation. And we cannot know, remember we talked about we cannot know God's light unless we knew Unless we know darkness, you know, we're, we're born, we're into darkness. And when we have an opportunity to be, you know, like give that opportunity to be saved and live in salvation, there's a light. And we, we finally get a chance to see what it means to live. And remember, we can also only know his strength by our weakness. Um, David here in this, in this portion of scripture, he was in a pretty bad situation. Um, but David chose not to look at the chaos and the problems of the day. But he saw the goodness and the mercy and the love of our God and fear left him. You see, that's the choice we need to make, whether we're going to look at the fear and the chaos or are we going to look at God, who is our assurance, who is our salvation, who has goodness and mercy that is renewed every morning um, and and loves us despite what we may think or feel. Uh, Fear will leave us when we do that. And um, the first enemy that, that God defeats is the fear uh, is the fear of the enemy. So remember that salvation in this scripture, the lesson that we pull out of this was salvation is in God, not ourselves and not our circumstances, despite where you may find yourself. Verses two and three, we looked at David's trial. And he says, when my enemies came up to eat my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. Kind of a gruesome looking, you know, sounding verse. But David could have written it this many, many times during his life. You may be able to write this many times in your life. Um, You know, when he was being chased by Saul's army or or any other time, you know. Don't forget, you know, that he he, maybe it was a time when he fought the bear or fought the lion. and, And the giant was also out to destroy him. And even Saul, you know, continued to kill him after he was brought in. There's so many different occasions when David could have wrote this and probably couldn't wrote him, you know, many times. He was totally surrounded by enemies. He was totally surrounded and the pressure was creeping in. And maybe you felt like that. But we need to be like what like David is and, and we need to know that salvation is there. You see, David says this, my enemies stumbled. Right? David watched God defeat his enemies. It was God's salvation that saved him. It was God's power, his mercy that saved him. God is God, even over our enemies, even over your circumstances. He can frustrate, he can frustrate the plans of the wicked who seek our destruction. God's always got our back. He's always got our plans in his hands. Our times are in his hands. And so we don't need to look at the odds. We need to look at God. And that's what we saw in verse 3 and 4. Excuse me, two and three, verses four and five. David's key. See, this was the 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 thing that made him tick. He says, "One thing I have desired, and that I will seek, that I will may dwell in the house of the Lord." David's key and ours really should you know to to God's house is to be able to say, "This one thing I desire." You see, the key to finding God's salvation is to seek Him with our whole heart to come you know, with our whole heart and to be single-minded, to, to be totally set on seeking out the Lord. You know, too often we, we, we inquire without seeking. You know, we, David says that he wanted to dwell in the house of the Lord and to behold the beauty of the Lord. And a lot of times, again, we come without seeking, dwelling, or beholding. We want God's answers, but we don't want God. We just want him to answer our problem. We want him to fix our problem, but we're not really maybe sold on completely selling out to him in his ways. Can I tell you, answers only come after we have fellowship and committed our lives to him. 
and he wants us to want him. He's just like us. We want to be wanted. We want to be loved. And God's the same way and deserves it. Amen? And God's presence is a secret, solid place. And that's what we saw in this, these two verses here. In verse 6, we saw how David was promoted. And we talked about how sometimes in, in, in trials and situations and circumstances, God allows us to go through to promote us. You see, when we were saved, we were a babe in Christ. And we, we dwelt on the milk of the word. And then as we grow, we're, to, we're supposed to grow and level up and, and graduate, uh, just like we do in real life, in our spiritual life. We're supposed to be spiritually mature. And, and David understood promotion. In Psalm 75, he mentioned promotion comes from God. You see, David was promoted from a shepherd boy to a lion uh, and bear killer to a giant killer to like the, the king's right-hand music man to a warrior and then finally to a shepherd king. And at each step, there was a crisis, but there was God's salvation. And so see, if each step that we go through, each circumstance, each trial that we go through, there's salvation. And those trials are made to help our faith grow. They're supposed to make our faith grow, not diminish, not pull us away, but to make us grow in faith so that we understand that our salvation is not in us. But it's in God, and we turn, choose to trust God despite the situation, despite the circumstance, despite the health situation. We know that in all things, it all, all comes from God. Salvation comes from God. And see, David prayed, and he, his praise and his worship, it, it wasn't perfect by no means. But he praised God joyfully and with all of his heart. You see, because he knew everything. He had made the choice. Everything came from God. Everything came from God. He allowed these things maybe to come into his life so that he would grow. Um, his praise was aware that God delivered him from all certain, all destruction. You see, God's got our back. And we, I think sometimes when things go hard or things go bad, we think, well, God's left us. God has never left you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. His words exactly. And so we just need to, to learn, as, as we've talked about so many times in the past, don't look just at the physical of what's going on around you, but know in your spirit, live by the spirit, live by your heart, and know God has everything in control and has your times in his hands. And so when these chaotic times come about, everything's good. And promotion and crisis comes from God. In verses 7 through 10, that's the last couple of verses we got a chance to look at last time. We looked at David's prayer. And David said on several occasions, I cried unto the Lord. Hear me when I cry. You see, David's prayer wasn't that of a perfect written prayer. Uh, his prayer was heartfelt. It was passionate. And that's what I love about prayer. You know, people who say that you have to say this, that, and the other, and you have to obey what Jesus said in the New Testament. Jesus just gave us kind of a template. But you know what? God wants to hear our heart. You know, he knows our heart anyway. And so why don't we just tell him, how we feel. Why don't we be heartfelt? Why don't we be passionate about our, our prayers and be honest with God? So many times we, we give God the, the condensed version. And you know what? God knows what's going on anyway. And David says, hear me when I cry for mercy. Uh, the word mercy in this specific text means to show kindness to an inferior, meaning showing kindness to a person who's much lower. Show kindness to me, Lord Jesus. And he looked up to God knowing that the only mercy, that only mercy of a loving God could save him. And see, that's what we need to know. We need to know that when we come to God, the Bible says, let, let, my, let your request be known unto God. And we need to know God wants to hear our heart. He doesn't want to hear a bunch of words. He doesn't want to hear just an every night mundane memory type of verse. He wants to know and hear your heart. And it's in sort, it, the second portion of this scripture is important to note that God prompted David to pray. You see, he said, when you said, seek my face, my heart said, your face I shall seek. A lot of times we, we've maybe been in a situation where the Holy Spirit prompts us to pray. What have you done in that situation? Have you just kind of shrugged it off and said, ah, it's okay? Because, can I be honest with you? We should, it should, it would be very wise for us to respond. Um, no matter where we are, you know, if it's in the car or if it's uh, walking down the street, because if the Holy Spirit's prompting you to pray, there's a need. 
There's an issue. And God is requiring you and, and calling you. So how awesome is that? He's prompting you to pray for a situation, to pray for someone or a circumstance. The scripture says that we have not because we ask not. You see, God wants to save us, and he will, if only we call on him and set our face to seek his face. It's exactly what our scripture, Second Chronicles 7.14 says, If my people, who are called by my name, would pray and seek my face, and, hum, and, and uh, ask for forgiveness of their sins, repent from their sins, turn from their wicked ways, rather, then I would hear from heaven, and I would forgive them of their sins, and I will heal their land. You see, God is wanting to do all this, but he's looking for people who are serious in their prayer and seriously heartfelt praying, and not just seeking answers, not just wanting an answer to a problem, but they want the real answer who is God. They want the, the one who gives the answer in their lives and be a part of that. It's, it's not just seeking the answers, but it's seeking God. And when we find his presence, we'll find his answers. We also look in this portion of scripture that David wasn't seeking revenge on uh, revenge on his enemies. He was seeking God. His presence belongs to us and if we let revenge you know get a hold of us then we kind of put ourselves out of a situation to allow God to avenge us, to help revenge, you know, our situation. If somebody's done you wrong in in this situation where David was, you know, running from Saul, um, he could have easily taken, you know, he had many opportunities to take Saul's life. But he knew that, that vengeance was the Lord's, and he just would seek the Lord out rather than seek out the revenge. So there's three different type of uh, lessons we can learn out of these verses. But we, the main one we want to pull out is that heartfelt prayer touches God, and anything less is inadequate. Now verses 11 and 12 is David's path. And many, many people want to see God's work but they're not zealous for God's ways, right? They want to see the miracles, but they don't want to put the prayer time in. They want to see the things things work out according to what God has planned, but they're not willing to do the work. Can I tell you, great leaders and great Christians know God's ways. Lead me in the plain path, David says. A plain path is a level, kind of a straight, simple, and progresses towards God's purpose and God's will. It's straightforward. Straight forward. Um, there's no bends. There's no turns. There's no complications. In the book Pilgrim's Progress, Pilgrim comes to a place and on the path that goes between two lions. And his companion Christian points out that the lions are on either side are chained. And if he and Pilgrim stay on the path, the lions cannot harm him. This is true of life. There are enemies on every side of us. We're always being, you know, yelled at or screamed at or, or, or tempted to look or pulled away from this path that we're walking on, this journey that we're on. There's enemies on either side of this path. And if we stray, there is a devouring enemy who will seek our destruction, who seeks our destruction. He wants to kill. He wants to steal, right? That's what the word says. And, and really, to be honest with you, there's, there's a lot of bones that lie just off the path. You know, if you look down at the path, a lot of people have, have strayed and fallen off the path and unfortunately have been destroyed. But can I tell you, there is safety on the plain, level, straight path to God. And that's where we need to focus our, our hearts. We need to focus our minds and focus our sight. Focus, fix our eyes on Jesus Christ. And know that there, danger is good if it causes us to seek God and to walk straight. So we just need to be wise to stay on that path as David did. And finally, in verses 13 and 14, we see David's advice. He, he gives us some advice. He says, David, you know, David said, I would have fainted unless I had believed. Many have fainted because they've failed to believe. They've they've believe for a moment and it doesn't have fall you know whatever happened they're praying for it doesn't fall through or or something happens and and then they just stop failing to believe our society as a whole is very prosperous and yet also very depressed um, multitudes of Christians even suffer depressions because of the stress uh, and and just everything going on can I tell you doubt and fear will hinder our relationship will hinder our steps and we work hard to be secure rather than 
to trust God, right? We build up our bank account. We build up our careers to feel secure. That way I don't have to trust God. We battle situations. We battle circumstances. Try to do it all on our own. We walk crooked paths and find little rest. You know, we, we do all this footwork. And we, you know, maybe we trust in people who let us down. We trust in ourselves and we let ourselves down only to become weak and tired. Well, David's advice in this scripture would be to believe what God has said and seek him rather than fight our own battles, rather than put our trust in circumstances, in our bank account, in everything else that, we, that would take God's rightful place to be able to trust in. I notice that is in this chapter, David believed that God was good. And that we could see his goodness in this life. You see, David wasn't uh, just hoping against hope. He knew it. He believed it. And heaven is real. And we're on a journey. On this path that we called life. And heaven's joy and its peace are for this life as well. But even more so when we get to heaven. But we can enjoy that now if we believe. And we know that, that we accept that God is good. David would say also this, wait for the Lord. The word wait in this passage means bound together. Don't move without God. Don't move you know, ahead of Him. Don't stay behind Him. Move with God or don't move. And so I think it's important to see that to keep our faith and, and our assurance and our salvation, we have to stay with God. We have to continue to believe. Our faith needs to re we be rekindled and grow in our trust in God daily to move with God. David advises one more thing. He says, be of good courage and he will strengthen your heart. Your courage is to, to have heart. Exercise your courage even if you only have a little. Stand up. Be bold for Christ in a whole new way, especially in this day we live today. Stand up. Keep believing in God and don't, don't lose heart. And he will add his courage to yours. You know, don't give up on him. Uh, even though it looks like every chip is down, we need to stand firm on the word of God, on the promises of God. Listen, I know I'm speaking things that, you know, when you speak, it's a little easier than being in the situation. But but as I mentioned earlier, this, this could be a test for your faith. God may be testing us, testing you to say, hey, I want you to grow in your faith. I want you to grow in your life. Whether you've been serving the Lord for four years or 40 years, we grow until we see Jesus Christ face to face. And David says this in this scripture. The lesson we can pull from these two scriptures is that God has a time to deliver you from your situations if you wait for it in faith. Don't get ahead of him. Don't stay behind him. But stay with him. His timing is perfect. God's ways are perfect. And sometimes that's far, hard for us to understand or even believe, but we need to start doing that, especially in this day and time. We don't know what tomorrow holds. We don't know what all of this is entailing to, but we know we do live in the last days. So whatever the way goes, we need to learn to trust God and believe Him in His Word. In closing, I want to say this. David was a very victorious follower of God. He's a good model to, to look after. I love reading about him in, in Samuel and Psalms and see all the different things that he did. He didn't always do the things right, which makes him more personal to me. He wasn't perfect, just like I'm not, just like you're not. But he knew where to go when trouble came. He didn't go to the bars. He didn't go to the ladies. He didn't go to any, you know, the, the best drug house in the, you know, in the land. He didn't go to, to anything else besides God. And I think if we learn anything from David, we could see that, that he knew where his salvation lied. And he knew that he was saved by the grace of God. And that his God would deliver him and save him out of all of his troubles. Yeah, he may have to go through a couple pain moments, but God had him even covered in that time. And I think we need to take just an example from David and know, know that we know that God is our God. And we can be assured our salvation is not built on who we are, but who God is. And with that, let's pray. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you so much for the assurance of salvation. 
God, it's not by anything that I've done or circumstances that I've put myself in. It's not by any words that I have said or any actions that I have done. But God, it's by your mercy that is renewed daily. And it's by the grace and by your son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for us, Lord God, to be able to have salvation. And Lord, I give you honor and I give you praise. And I thank you, Father, for reminding me that my assurance lies in your, the salvation that you have given me. I am good. I know that I'm going to stand face to face with you as long as I stay on the straight and narrow path, Lord. And I don't get ahead of you in my circumstances. And I trust you through all the chaotic moments of my life. And during those moments, let my faith grow in you as it's never done before. For, Father, I can't wait till the day that I stand face to face with you. And again, thank you, Lord Jesus, for my assurance is known tonight that I am saved by grace. I give you honor and praise. I ask your blessing upon each one here tonight that has joined us in this study. Let it be applied to our lives. Let us walk even more and grow in you like we've never done before. And we'll forever give you the glory and honor. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. With that being said, church, God bless and have a great evening.